Good evening, everybody. Let us start today's webinar. I welcome Mr. Manish Ji Kothari from uh, Rhino Machines Anand for this webinar. Let me introduce him first. Uh, Manish Kothari is Managing Director of Rhino Machines Anand, Gujarat, Badoda. And uh, he was involved in the foundry business from his school days and uh, uh, from, 90, uh, from 1984. So almost 36 years he is in a foundry business through various uh, activities he are doing. Uh, he is also one of the main pillar for our dynamic foundry group activities. His vision for the education and the training and the promotion of knowledge based sharing has always motivated me, uh, myself, as well as Dynamic Foundry Group. And that is why we can be able to take up various projects and activities for the knowledge sharing in our Dynamic Foundry Group. So a lot of, uh, lot of credit goes to Manish Ji. Thank you very much for your uh, proactive support to us. Uh, Manish is also recognized by the UNIDO for his innovative work in the field of automation training in 2015 and 2016. From 2017, he's joined their activities as a mentor and he's continuing that activities till, till, till date. So uh, this is a versatile personality. Manish Kothari is a versatile personality and lucky to have such a nice and versatile personality for today's webinar. Uh, regarding today's session, that is sand reclamation. Sand reclamation, as you all know, is a very important topic as of now because, as you all know, sand is a, a natural resource and it is going to be dried day by day and it is very difficult for us to have that uh, natural resources in future. So to make a future investment, we have to work on sand reclamation. We have to optimize that sand reclamation activities and for that to guide us to help us and to make us more uh, capable doing this uh, we have arranged this webinar today on sand reclamation so i once again welcome mr manish kothari and ask him to continue and i'm handing over this uh, platform to manish manish welcome please continue thank you thank you sandeep ji for uh, thank you <laughs> for that uh, introduction though i don't I don't participate a lot nowadays in the discussion, but I'm always there. Uh, and I am so glad that Dynamic Foundry Group has been uh, coming together to uh, see that this COVID period is not underutilized and we use it to the maximum period in sharing uh, knowledge, technology, and connecting with each other. Uh, so, uh, Sandeep ji, uh, when he asked me whether I can talk about sand reclamation. So sand reclamation is a subject which is very uh, near and dear to me. It's because one of the mission statements which uh, I have uh, inherited from my uh, father, uh, R.C. Kothariji, is on waste recovery and energy efficiency as two key uh, areas where uh, as, a, as a business we have been working. So sand reclamation in foundry becomes a very important uh, from the waste recovery perspective. Uh, my first experience with sand reclamation was in the late 90s, 98, 99, 2000. That was when, uh, along with my, uh, my dad, uh, we worked on the CO2 sand reclamation at that time, which was sodium silicate with cured uh, uh, by carbon dioxide. And that was a mechanical attrition. We had the patent in year 2000. And it was that period where there was a lot of CO2 based uh, uh, foundries who were trying to reclaim the sand. There were pollution problems. There was uh, availability problems. And since then, we have always been trying to look at different sand reclamations. Uh, so what I'll try to share with you is my experiences on sand reclamation, as I understand. Uh, some of the data which I have been collecting uh, over a period of time. So basically, I uh, consider sand reclamation as uh, from my understanding. So I'm talking of the general sand reclamation processes categorized into three uh, major categories. One is the green sand, where, which we normally call as clay bonded, bentonite bonded sand. 
the second being chemically bonded sand also called as nobe and the third is sodium silicate bonded uh, now each of these processes uh, through my career i have seen different processes uh, uh, which i would like to share with you uh, so from sodium silicate uh, one as i explained to you was a mechanical attrition which we did in uh, 2000 and later on we also uh, uh, got into uh, discussion and connected with another company called sojem engineering uh, who was who were uh, doing a combination of thermal and mechanical and uh, but there the the binder was ester so there was an ester cured uh, sodium silicate process which was also existing and even today uh, as the chemically bonded sand has some pol uh, pollution hazards as a chemical itself uh, there's a there's a phase of inorganic binder which is going on in europe uh, our uh, partners with which whom we have been working part aluminum uh, recently of the last 6 7 years they did make some trials demonstration and i think they have supplied a plant also where there's a mechanical attrition of sodium silicate bonded with ester and some some uh, inorganic binders which i don't have much detail but i think that is a process which may come to india in some time as the pollution forms become uh, stringer and some of the chemically bonded sand processes may shift to this inorganic binder from the organic binder the chemically bonded sand reclamation has been very popular for several years uh, the first reclamation is the mechanical attrition which we see it nobek you have a knockout and a mechanical attrition unit which is very standard and since the reclaimability of uh, uran would reach to 95% to 90% and uh, phenolic may be 85 90% uh, thermal regeneration came into picture only when the volume was very high Uh, and there the chemical uh, was uh, burnt at a certain degree say let us say around 550 to 600 degrees centigrade and the processes are working there are several plants like this in india from various manufacturers working then there is another process which has come uh, become very popular which is the alpha set as we call it it's a alkaline phenolic where you need a chemical addition plus thermal to reclaim it uh, this is another process we which we have experimented i have been seeing this process for last 8 9 years it was existing in europe uh, but in the last installation which we did we had set up a pilot plant in our factory we did the trials with this process technically we found the process to be uh, well it was validated along with the support of a chemical supplier we got the uh, additives the economics is something which needs to be worked on and then there is a process uh, which is common for both clay uh, bonded and chemically bonded is by grinding of or peeling of the layer of resin from the sand which are not many plants uh, i have not seen but i have heard about it uh, there have been some trials going on but we are not having much details in the public domain at this moment except some marketing material there is not much of technical detail available on which we can deliver it so uh, green sand is something which i have been involved for as we say from 1986 actually when i went into a foundry to commission a molding line and that's where the green sand was the first process which i have seen and i remember seeing the green sand reclamation in bilai engineering uh, in uh, besco in kolkata where they were washing the sand and drying it so there was a huge humongous plant you need a lot of water and you have to dry it so it was not very easy to manage so you could reclaim the sand but then managing the sludge and the water was uh, has been a very big issue so even though this process was successful to some extent it did not uh, become uh, very popular though this technology was developed in india and it had come from overseas 
uh, it did not become very popular. This plant, I think, uh, my father had sold in the 80s uh, or, or helped engineer the plant, not sold, uh, with somebody from uh, Mumbai. After that, I have not seen more plants of this type. Uh, then we'll come to the mechanical attrition, mechanical plus thermal, mechanical, chemical, thermal, and grinding, polishing as we go forward. Because this is an area which has, uh, which probably we see there are uh, some cluster plants, uh, one in Belgaum, uh, two in Kolapur, where these installations have been done. Uh, I, I don't have much detail about that. And we have done a few plants for which I will share the case studies of what we have done, where there's only mechanical attrition, there's mechanical plus thermal, there's mechanical with a chemical addition and thermal which is being done by somebody not by us and grinding and polishing plant is i had seen the first plant by jemco in netherlands maybe around 15 16 years ago or more 20, more than 20 years ago where uh, they were peeling off the layer uh, on a grind like a grinding stone it was a huge plant maybe five or ten tons per hour uh, but because of the size and maybe the complexity it did not become so popular. Uh, but there are some, some, uh, some work going on right now with um, Sinto has been proposing this for quite some time. There's another Japanese company which is proposing. Uh, I don't know the results, but maybe as, as things go, it may become popular. Uh, and uh, we have to see the economics recovery in context of what is happening in India. So we, we have to see from our side whether it will work or not. So, so as I um, uh, explained in the sodium silicate process, uh, so there, is a, there are two aspects which I have been always looking at. One is the technical and second is the commercial. So technical feasibility is the first part. And there have been a lot of, so when we are doing this mechanical thermal, uh, thermal reclamation of green sand, I have been receiving a lot of inquiries. Can we do the sodium silicate process in this or not? Uh, so there's a clear no, it will not happen because uh, it's not exothermic in nature. It's, it's an inorganic binder. So it does not burn off. And uh, so it will not get reclaimed in the thermal system as a, uh, uh, a chemically bonded sand won't happen. And so thermal has been ruled out as of now. The process which is right now being done uh, with a the thermal was only to dry it or heat it up to some extent and then mechanical attrition. But that again was for ester period, so we don't have much data on that subject as of now, because that process itself is not so popular in India. The other when we went into the mechanical attrition, which we developed in the uh, late 90s and in the 2000 uh, decade, and we have sold a lot of machines. Uh, there were there were requests requests for making it mechanized and completely automated. Uh, over a period of time, I started to see because I was into installation commissioning and interacting with the customer that the dust was very aggressive. The reclamation would happen, but the dust was very aggressive, and it would eat away the paint and powder coated panels completely became naked in, in a year's time. So this, this was a very dangerous phenomenon because if this dust goes into the human body, uh, it's not a good exercise. So this process, though it worked, we, we always recommended to keep mechanization as little as possible so that this dust does not fly around. Because the more you handle, the dust will fly more and more. Uh, the second was being a mechanical attrition. Uh, it was not a 100% recovery, which was possible. And maximum, we were able to use maybe 70 or 50% of sand in the facing sand after mixing with new sand. That too for certain steel castings, not for all. And it needed an adjustment in the process of water addition to compensate for uh, the hygroscopic nature of the sand after reclamation. And there was uh, also this friability which would come up if we did not add water. 
So these are two, three areas where this process had some limitations and still has some limitations. Though a lot of diesel people after that, what they did was they used the vibratory pressures and used this sand as backing. But in the facing, they are using uh, completely new sand in the mechanical attrition process, whether it is our machine or somebody else is making only the mechanical pressure. Uh, so this, this process uh, is not very easy. It's cumbersome. There's a lot of manual work involved in the sodium silicate. For small foundries, yes, you can do it. Uh, and they have been doing it. But over a period of time, sodium silicate CO2 process itself is not so popular. And the last is the ester process where the reclamation is better, but not much data in public domain, as I explained. Commercially, the, the mechanical attrition process, the cost was not very high. So the return of investment, uh, as I document, used to be around eight months to one year when you are selling this process. There is also one more process which I have not mentioned is in a Coimbo tour by uh, Mr. Vishwanathan is uh, using the washing process. Uh, but it, it is again the similar to what I explained for green sand. Uh, the washing requires uh, water managing. Uh, so you move out of one pollution to into managing another pollution. The investment may not be very high. Uh, the technologies may be available. It has been shown as a success. Uh, there is a lot of success in Coimbatore, but I don't know uh, how much, how many foundries are actually being able to use it. And uh, so maybe uh, more data can help foundries decide whether this could be a good process. But what uh, I remember when I had talked to Mr. Vishwanathan was that he set up a system so that water could be used into some other process or in farming. And uh, that's how the balance was happening. That means there was a lot of water needed. So there will be certain uh, pros and cons for this process also. Um, so dust disposal cost ha has not been available because this popular, uh, this process has not been so popular and not much information is available on this. So this is as far as sodium silicate process is concerned. Uh, so so I'll, I'll reach the green sand process last because it has much more interest, I know. But let us finish what we know to some extent and uh, see that we uh, come to an understanding of the, how these three different categories of sand processes are uh, being done. If there is any question where if you are not understanding, or if my, I'm not very clear, you may please ask now also. There is not wait for the Q&A. Uh, so we, we don't uh, miss the chain of thoughts. So chemically bonded process, well established, proven, perfinally, curon, resin coated. Alpha set is a process which still is not been very uh, well proven in our country today for multiple reasons. One is the cost of sand itself, which is used in alpha set. And that's the basis of why alpha set became popular is not very high. And the reclamation cost of alpha set process is more than the cost of the new sand. So that itself is a no starter for establishing this process in our country. And it is not only the cost of the chemical, which may be, maybe we are importing right now, but it is also the energy consumed and, uh, and the gas consumed in the mechanical process, which uh, make it not so uh, feasible commercially right now. Uh, but again, the process of grinding, polishing uh, can be used, but we don't have much data available right now, which is a, a common uh, subject which you will see that uh, not much information is available in India on different processes or comparatives, which can help foundry men uh, really find which is the right uh, path because it's a question of quantity, quality, and economics. There's a combination and we, we have to take a weighted decision based on this process. Uh, I'm not sure if the clusters are doing alpha set process. Uh, I have not heard about it. Uh, if there is some information, maybe I would be happy to receive. The commercials, as I said, uh, is, um, it is viable and that is why it has grown in popularity except for alpha set. 
the grazing coated sand has a, a different perspective for viability because the moment we get into resin coated sand i need to also have the coating plant integrated otherwise the logistics cost becomes difficult so this this will require uh, some sort of uh, arrangement between the consumer of resin sand and the producer of resin sand so those foundries who have got an internal coating plant uh, i think have probably put up this plant and integrated it so process wise it has been successful commercially also it is viable uh but when when we have uh, a divided usage means the resin coating uh, coated uh, resin manufacturer is different and the consumer is different then it becomes a little complicated to manage this system so the most uh, discussed topic is about green sand uh, reclamation and uh, it has been about 7 years that i have been uh going across the country and collecting information since 2013 or 2014 uh six years now when we we started to work together with pata who have been in this business for last 25 years or more and they had a lot of experience but their experiences were of uh installations in europe or in uh mexico or brazil which were huge plants Uh, 5 tons per hour, 10 tons per hour, 12 tons per hour, 25 tons per hour, and uh, so there was there was a need to see whether this sand could be used in India and what were the commercials. So I tried to put these two parameters: the technical side. Uh, there was not enough data on historical performance in India, not much of forest process validation. as far well, uh, and therefore the processing cost data also is limited the return of investment uh, and uh, whether it, the sand is being used for molding or for coating or for core making different efsf sand what happens to the indian sand what happens if i use the sand? so there were so many questions and not much information has still been put together for india and probably we as foundry in the industry may like to work on this part and collaborate with each other to put this data together so uh, so there are there are still a lot of uh, work to be done on green sand reclamation in india uh, there are three four people who are working on this uh, i can share what i have done um, the cluster in kolapur can probably share what they have done because there are two green sand reclamation plants as i have understood but it is uh, i don't have the re reference data so i cannot make a comparison or a comment on that so when i started to uh, work in india on the green sand reclamation so i started getting a lot of generic questions and these were some of the questions which were there in the uh, google form also which uh, sandeep ji shared with me whether it will work with indian sand or not where is it working in india india mein kahan chal raha hai so uh, there were there were a lot of questions whether okay the sand in uh, europe is good quality uh, whether it will work in india or not now pata had a pilot plant in italy india does not allow sand to be sent out and europe does not allow old sand to be imported so you can send old sand from india but you cannot import old sand in europe you cannot send new sand from india so this there was initially we tried to see if we can send this sand indian sand to europe but it was not possible at that period of time because of the technical reasons so uh, it needed a plant working in india third question what is the cost of reclamation because uh, again the sands are different the uh, the properties the consumption of uh, the amount of bentonite which is there in our process and the ben bentonite which is there in europe may be different or in brazil may be different so the cost was always a question um, the factor which was very different was the cost of procurement of sand and and this is where we as foundry as it is we are struggling for cost in our country and then if we talk of cost of reclaimed sand being equal or more than the cost of new sand so green sand reclamation is a no starter for 
setting up the plant and this this is a, a situation where i think for the last 4 5 years i have seen the plants not coming up because the economical viability is always a question and if it is not economically viable uh, foundries cannot increase their cost for an offline process it's not an online process it is not still not become a necessity as of now uh, we get some uh, so i have seen a huge demand rise when alabad mines were stopped and suddenly when we found there was an alternative suddenly that demand for reclamation disappeared because foundries are trying to see that they survive sustain in this competitive world and reclamation cannot be just treated no it is necessary without this the casting cannot be made we'll find our way we'll find some sand we'll adjust our process and get the sand so how to justify it was the question and even for foundries which had a large consumption so one was there was a found there are foundries which have very slow low consumption and the justification is very difficult there are foundries who may be consuming 100 to 200 tons of sand every day not month every day for them they have so many uh, projects on pollution management that the internal rate of return and this is something which i learned as i discuss with some large companies the yes mr manjunath you have some question so i see some hand so maybe you can put it in the chat box uh, so the internal rate of return would not allow the the uh, project to take priority so it would end up at the almost the end of the list because every every organization has multiple uh, needs and there are so many things an industry would have to do to continuously uh, look at managing their uh, pollution environment policies so this last question was where uh, also a question uh, something where i found people asking me this how to increase the viability and again uh, connecting with uh, so even if i gave the reports of this is working in europe or in uh, south america our sand is different we need trials on our system even after we had done uh, the pilot test in our own country with our indian sand one foundry will say that the sand of that foundry is different and our foundry is different so krupal bhai i'll uh, come to your question later on uh, we'll we'll come to uh, i don't think there's much change in the parameters whether the sand is from alabad or mangalore or anywhere it will be the the so it's like putting garbage in and garbage out if your quality of sand is good uh at the input the quality of sand at the output will be a reflection of what you have put inside the the process of reclamation is only removing the unwanted parts of the sand so what you do when you when you buy new virgin silica sand you are looking for new virgin silica sand again if you buy uh, a mined sand which has got a two peak efs sand and you put it into a reclamation plant possibly you might get the same pattern as you have put inside and you may have to but after uh, reclamation if you are sieving and removing you may get a better sand but your recovery will be lesser so the question uh, which kupal has asked is about whether the process parameters change if sand is changed so this is this is something which uh, and that's why this last statement our sand is different the sand is different because our purchase specifications may be different our source of sand may be different our uh, shape of sand may be different so sand may be different but the process is same what we put in is what we will get out of the system uh, but i then put a, a question on the other side so from my perspective uh when we are taking the cost of sand these are the questions which i used to ask the founder 
sorry accounting the cost of rejection to the cost of sale and this is probably where process people in the foundry may be able to answer um, when this alabad mining uh, was stopped there was uh, there was a, a change to uh, this um, uh, sand from rajasthan which was mined and crushed sand which was angular and probably not as as good as the original alabad sand but the foundry adjusted to it and then i asked them and similar was the case in uh, west bengal so they said we are getting sand from alabad but our sand from bankoda is also good enough and it is cheaper so my question to them was then why did you use alabad sand for so many years if it was if bakoda sand was good enough that means you are making a loss so there is something between the two which is not documented and probably foundry people may be able to look at and come out this fig with this figure to see that they are able to justify the cost of sand uh, so cost of sand is not only the cost of purchase of sand okay so there are three more questions uh, so as we progress for the technique we we'll, uh, i cannot give an answer which is which is the best technique we can only compare the uh, results and uh, for the properties also i'll uh, i think we'll get the information as we go further so the questions will get answers as we progress so uh, let me continue and the second uh, is uh, the impact of the quality of sand and the surface finish and the quality of casting are we accounting that to the cost of sand are we accounting the losses which we may have if the sand is not available means it's a question of sustainability uh, today in india disposal cost sometimes people get money for sand, giving sand but uh, because probably black sand is not that harmful so is it is it that this uh, sand for but if you go to europe the cost of disposal is two times of the new sand which makes a very different equation when you talk of uh, uh reclamation uh, viability so the at the end the sand is an asset or liability is what the foundry will have to uh, answer for themselves uh, this is these are the questions i can pose and this presentation has been shared with sandeep ji which will be made available to you so Uh, there, there is no trade secret or yeah, this is all information available for sharing. So what, what I did, uh, and as an organization, we got the information. I collected a lot of information, uh, understood the risk, understood the opportunity, what does the market need, what are the solutions available. So it now I am moving to what. we supply because now i don't know about the other products i can talk about the solutions we have done so to understand that did the seeking uh, uh, sort the information understood what are the risk and then when we start when i started to understand that all the questions cannot be answered without a plant in india together with pata we set up a uh, first we partnered them and then invested in prototypes and set them up in our own premises in our factory with, rather than going into any cluster model and for a very long cycle we had, we wanted to reduce the cycle and we set up this facility over here and started to document environmental impact economics which is equal to sustainability so the entire exercise moved from pure economics to a combination of environment and economics uh because in the as a pollution board pollution board they would say that i can stop the foundry but i cannot because uh, uh ultimately if it is not affordable how can i stop the foundry so these questions remain unanswered and that's where we started to uh so that that's where we we really uh, try to look at sustainability as the key driver because 
now even today if you talk it's all about sustainability development goals from sdg 1 to 17 if you go every goal has a different target so first was the environmental factor uh, which i started to calculate uh, so this this came from my experience in energy efficiency uh, innovation when i participated the so when i was participating in the energy efficiency i was asked the question what is the environmental impact now till then i was a machine manufacturer as a machine manufacturer i was not looking at environmental impact so 2015 is the period when i started to look at what could be the impact on the environment on the co2 emission and when we see in covid today and when somebody sends me a picture of i can see the himalayas from jalandhar so you can imagine the environmental impact which has been happening and today we can see what it can do so can we start to look at what actually is the environmental impact how many kgs of co2 emission are we uh putting into the air when you are transporting the sand by 400 kilometers by 600 or 800 and this is some plus the natural resources uh, part the second was to understand the consumption and so i made a generic uh, calculation of so if i go to a foundry which is not having uh, for uh, example kirloskar ferris is uh, or dcm where the core sand consumption would be almost 1 kg per uh, 1 kg of casting 1 is to 1 or 0.8 kg to 1 is to 1 tractor industry would have a different characteristic and then there will be low core item where your consumption may be nearly 0 0.1 to 0.3 kg per so the the mapping of the type of foundry with the consumption of sand is some an exercise which the foundry to do to understand uh, the need of the so whenever you pick up a component or a section you could identify the quantum of sand you need with that cluster how much sand is going to be purchased what is the disposal all those data could be put together and there was the aluminum uh, casting consumption so this is what i could understand from my own uh, survey so 2018 2019 is when we took the bigger step of setting up a, a cluster model of a sand reclamation plant where lot of people had visited when the exhibition was there in uh, ahmedabad in 2018 we had invited we had started the plant on in january and there we demonstrated all the different processes for green sand and for core sand we tested for alpha set and in an area of around 5540 square meter uh, we are able to demonstrate that and document all the data which i'll share with you now and break down the process so we started breaking down the process into parts so we gave them names s1 is when i'm using only for molding sand Uh, so this plant has been installed in Aquasub in CRI, and Aquasub is now putting up the second plant, Magna in Coimbatore. This has been adopted very quickly. They are the first users of these plants in our country, and uh, Aquasub is now nearly three, more than three years. They are been using this integrated with the plant, where they are able to reduce their new sand addition in the mixer. This this sand will go into the molding sand in the mixer. so those foundries were in the pumps and uh, uh, so aquasub is typically a pump casting manufacturer where 50% of their new sand goes into molding and 50% into core since uh, the process was uh, the investment was lesser uh, there was a need to take a first step so they invested in uh, so we co invested we also had a stake in that plant and we set up with their help in a years time you were able to set up the process and they are able to reduce their new sand addition in the mixer uh, or their average consumption has gone down by 50 to 60% already and they reduce the dead clay level by uh, around 40 to 50% in the reclamation process and balance their sand uh, when we set up the mechanical thermal mechanical unit at our factory in 2018 with the help of bricks india group company flow metallics we are able to establish another way of going to 
molding sand which was the mechanical and thermal where the entire sand which could was uh, which was coming out for the thermal treatment could be used as molding sand and these trials have been going on for quite a bit of time and now that the plant is uh, shifted there uh, we are now waiting for the covid uh, lockdown to open and things to start to go into full production trial productions have already been done over there for the last 4 or 5 months and uh, so this s4 has also found its place and this becomes very relevant when you work in cluster because in s1 process uh, it's uh, the foundry it's found, uh, the the foundry of one sand of one foundry cannot be used in the for sand, uh, another foundry because the characteristics are relative in the s4 it is absolute so you get a sand which is as good as virgin sand for molding sand but maybe not good enough for core because of the ph value the third mechanical uh, the third process which is s3 is when you do mechanical thermal mechanical the sand which comes out with around 2.5 to uh, ph uh, 2.5 adv at around 7 to 7.5 ph is something which can be used for making cores and this process has been established and the fine tuning is going on with flow metallics i would not say it is 100% done uh, it will take another 3 4 months before we can come with a good amount of data uh, of establishing the consumption of uh, resin the quality of core the impact on casting uh, yes we can make core but we want to establish the entire cycle before we go next and we also establish the costs there are so while the first process was costing around uh, 1 rupee per kg equivalent for the new sand the mechan but it could replace 50% of the new, uh, new sand the s4 process could replace the entire new sand if we have sufficient sand but the cost of the process is around 1.6 uh, in which the thermal is varying between 0.8 to 1.4 depending on the process uh, and for the core sand from mechanical thermal mechanical is something like 2.6 and this is one of the reasons why in kolapur this uh, plant or most of the places where the sand mines are not very far this process has not been uh, so uh, established till now this this probably will give you a graphical presentation of so there was there was also one more step which we did which is going beyond reclamation into making it a zero discharge foundry so whenever we did the entire reclamation there was around 20% or 25% of dust which was coming out and this was also a challenge which was given to us by uh, one of the buyers and he said i want a 100% uh, zero discharge otherwise i can throw out sand i cannot throw out dust and we have been able to put this plant up in our factory now uh, uh, we we have made some bricks using 75 to 80% of dust and 20 to 25% of plastic so it's a 100% waste which has been used for making this bricks and now we are moving into the commercial production as the pilot plant has been uh, stabilized the process has been stabilized we are now getting to the production mode but probably if if the foundries can map the quantity of sand coming from different places they would be able to plan the reclamation plant much better and this graphical presentation can probably give a major four areas the decoding sand the sand lumps coming from the uh, sand plant the excess sand which is thrown out and the cores which get broken rejected or the sand which is rejected which can come here so these are some case studies uh, 2015 uh, so satya murthy visited the plant 2016 was in production he gave a presentation at uh, ifc in kolkata in 2017 and now they are looking at the second plant installation and uh, in their third plant also they are planning for this uh, reclamation these are some of the data of uh, the input at different rates of uh, input what was the reduction in total clay uh, and how 
they have been able to manage their system so that dead clay now 2% dead clay is again a very good control of dead clay but they were able to reduce the dead clay by almost 2% on an average uh, so we did some trials when our uh, center engineer was there and in june 2019 we took this data and documented it Uh, this is uh, the plant which is very similar to uh, Aquasup, set up in CRI also in Kolkata, commissioned in 2018. This is the plant which we installed and in commissioned in January 2018 in our factory. And from this, we made all the trials of how is the origin, original sand, what is the uh, core sand, made cores out of it, uh, made some trials with some uh, one of our customers in Anand testing the scratch hardness and all the parameters. And uh, these are some of the direct costs. There are some indirect costs which have not been added. So uh, depending on the sand, uh, we could find uh, what are different uh, costs involved. And we try to arrive at the commercials of the process. We did some trial at Mahindra and Mahindra, uh, sent some sand and made a trial, but uh, we are still not moved ahead in that project. But we did some course at that time, about a year ago. And this is the installation which is now finally working in Clomatelix Jagadia. It's a complete turnkey project where it's uh, not only the project supply, we also moved into the operations and management of that plant. So that entire uh, uh, one year or six months, whatever period they want, our team will be operating and transferring the operational knowledge to their team. First set up the process, establish the process, establish the cost, and then hand over to the team to operate the plant. So there is a, a good uh, collaboration between the foundry and the foundry machine supplier which is very important if we want to uh, put this process into working. This is uh, the liquid order of Aquasup. So this plant is now uh, for the green sand to molding. This is the uh, configuration we are now installing in Magna Electrocasting. It's under installation right now. This is some data of the waste uh, Silica plastic box, uh, paper blocks, which you have been doing, and the strength is uh, two, two and a half times of the red brick, uh, and soon it will be commercialized. So, this is this is what I wanted to share with you. Uh, so, you can start with the questions, or is there anything in detail which anybody wants to understand? Thank you. Thank you, Manish. Uh, let us take question from chat box first, and then we'll move to the... Yeah, so let me open the chat box. box. So, from where do I start? Uh, so I think uh, as far as the properties are concerned, so I'll start with from the top. Yeah. Uh, meantime, I'm just requesting everybody to... I'm launching the poll, so give feedback meantime while the question answer session is going on. Okay. So the first question for process parameters for Drupal, I had already answered that uh, process parameters don't change. It is the sand which we are giving inside, which is very important. Uh, the second question is what, to what extent you can retain the sand properties after the reclamation process? Sand properties are not changed. Actually, uh, there is some information that the sand property will be better because it has already gone through thermal expansion in the mechanical thermal process. But there is not much of evidence which we can share today of what is the impact, but definitely there is an improvement. Secondly, uh, because we are screening it for the second time, the dust level and quality of sand may be better than what you have at the origin. It will depend on the quality of the original sand. It's a relative term, but it will not deteriorate for is what I have seen. So which sand reclamation technique is good so that we restore the original quality of sand? Uh, 
so which are which techniques are you comparing with because i know only one technique uh, uh means the data is available for only one technique today it's not that i don't know only, only one technique the amount of data which is available is only for one technique so it's not easy to give an answer to this question because i make this plant my obvious answer will be what i'm doing is uh, uh working well so then there was a question of what should be the percentage of reclaimed sand to be used with fresh virgin sand so if you are doing the uh, reclamation of uh, sand to core sand 100% core sand you can use 100% Uh, so whatever trials i'm talking of is there is no mix of fresh sand or virgin sand in that core sand it's all with 100% reclaimed sand but we have to also remember that the recovery of sand itself silica content will be something like 80% and 20% will be 15 to 20% will be lost because of the shape of the grain some dust generated some burning off so ultimately you might end up adding around 15 to 20% of new sand in your system so whether you want to use a virgin plus reclaimed mix or only virgin will uh, be a decision as a process which you have to take uh, because there is also one more parameter i have seen in the foundry that uh, you may have two different types of afs coming into the sand from two different sources what you will get at the end of the reclamation will be a average of that so if you are particularly in the shell process your control or in the cold walls the control of the uh, afs is very important so you may like to use 100% new sand for a certain process and use 100% reclaimed for, for a, so it's a question of balancing your system 